Hey there, this is Robert Kornacki, co-founder at Pato Studios. In this video, we're going to see how you can connect your wallet to start playing Wrath of the Jungle Tower Defense today. And we're going to take a look at the core gameplay styles of the attacker faction and the defender faction so that you can have a solid foundation to start playing and having a great time with the game today. Let's jump right in. So, once you get to the game page, you'll see that you have the option to click a drop down and select your wallet. In the release launch of this game, we will have full support for Cardano wallets, Polkadot wallets, and EVM wallets. So choose your favorite wallet of the bunch, select it from the drop down menu, and simply click connect. Once you click connect, your uh, wallet might ask you for authorization for the game to read your wallet. And once you authorize that, you'll get to the screen. From here, you can see that you can create, join, or see your existing games and your profile. With the profile, this is where you set your NFT. So if you have a Vulcaneer, you can choose it here. And that will set it to be your uh, default set stateful NFT, which will gain wins and losses as you play the game versus others. Uh, the My Games Join and Create options are primarily your main way of getting into gameplay, where you're going to be uh, either creating a lobby, joining a lobby, or if you have multiple lobbies open, you can switch and jump between them. This means that, for example, if you're playing multiple uh, long matches with long round times, for example, uh, that allows you to easily um, you know, jump between two or three or four matches, play with multiple friends at the same time, and really enjoy the experience of just jumping between games, especially with something that's this strategic, you can kind of, you know, do the uh, chess equivalent of having, you know, 10 matches open and play them back to back to back to back at the same time. As you can see, when you're creating a room, uh, you can choose the map type that you wish to play with. There are several maps and you get to choose whether you want to be attacker, defender or random. In our case, let's choose attacker and let's create a practice lobby. A practice lobby means that you won't be facing other real people on the blockchain, but instead you're going to be uh, still playing on the blockchain, but versus an AI that automatically plays. So this is a really great way to get a taste of the game, learn the strategies for the attacker, learn the strategies for the defender, and just get started. So if I click create here, um, my wallet pops up on the side, and now I'll click confirm to accept the transaction. And you will see that uh, within you know a couple seconds, just like that, we're in the game. With Milkomina C1 having uh, quite fast block times of two seconds, a lot of this is really quite fast, even though you're signing transactions. And in the coming weeks, we'll also have a new standard that we at Pima Studios have set called the gaming accounts, which will automatically sign transactions for you. And so that will make a gameplay of uh, tower defense really awesome but actually all Pima Studios games to have this really smooth uh, gameplay flow where the transactions will automatically sign themselves making this feel almost like a fully off-chain game while having all of the benefits of a true web 3 on-chain game so with that said and done let's actually jump into the gameplay itself as you can see at the very top each uh, the defender and attacker have gold with the current gold and the maximum limits. They have a name, which is generated from the address. And there is an image both on the top right and top left corners, which will be replaced with your uh, stateful NFT if you set one. Below, you will see that the defender has health, unlike the attacker. The goal of the defender is to survive the maximum number of rounds, in our case 10. Uh, and survive with at least one HP, while the goal of the attacker is to get the defender's HP to zero before the final round. At the very top, you'll also see we have uh, the round timer counting down, and we have the rounds visually displayed here in this timeline. With this timeline, you'll see the defender went first, and that's why we already see two structures, uh, two towers already created. And now it is the attacker's turn, so it's our turn. In the first two rounds of the game, there is no battle phase, which is identified by this yellow line in the timeline. And so, uh, so it's fair for both the attacker and defender 
there is no battle phase in the first two uh, rounds. And then after that, every single round going forward always has a battle phase. So uh, let's kind of jump into the game and I'll kind of walk you through things as we go round by round by round. Uh, for the attacker, we have three types of crypts, Gorilla Crypt, Macaw Crypt, and Jaguar Crypt. In our case, let's create uh, one Gorilla Crypt at the bottom. And to show something fun off, let's put one Macaw Crypt up top. I click Submit. On the side, my wallet popped up. I click Confirm. And just like that, got posted to the chain, read by the game, and now uh, technically, the AI submitted uh, its moves for round three, and now the battle phase has started. As you can see at the bottom, we kind of have this player for the round, which is really nice, because you get to see, you know, at any point, you can jump forward, jump back, you can uh, speed up 2x, 4x, uh, you can pause at any moment, you can skip to the end of the round, and one nice uh, fun feature is you can have the camera zoom in and uh, get a different angle for the gameplay. So if we just jump back quickly, you can see here that on the bottom, as soon as the gorillas are being uh, spawned by my gorilla crypt, and note gorillas have very high HP, but low speed, it, they're being destroyed by the anaconda because we got hard countered by the defender. The anacondas are hard counters to gorillas because they one-shot the gorillas, but anacondas have very low HP as a tower. Macaws, on the other hand, the units don't have all that much HP, but they have decent speed and they have a really cool trait where they actually attack the defender structures as they pass by. So if we take notes, the opponent's piranha tower, which has high range and high attack speed, dealt decent damage to these. And as you can see, the uh, Sloth Tower, which has AoE uh, attacks, which did, which uh, do very well against Macaws, and they also have decent HP, and they specifically um, are good counters, but however, they are weak to Jaguars because explicitly their AoE attack does zero damage to Jaguars. And as you can note, the sloth tower right here which the macaws passed by they did five damage out of 60 and so you have this kind of interesting dynamic where typically uh, in tower defense you don't really expect this type of both the attacker and defender potentially having the ability to cause damage to the other so as we saw here this anaconda tower uh, was really bad against or really strong against our gorillas and so what we can do to counter that is actually to specifically destroy the anaconda tower since it got placed really high up front i can place two macaw towers right there and these will destroy the anaconda tower and what's really cool about macaws is that you place them once and they kind of end up being this long-term investment where you deal damage to the opponent's towers and they automatically, for free, after the initial upfront cost, always deal damage, where the defender has to spend gold to actually repair uh, their tower in order for it to not to get destroyed. So one Macaw Tower is a one-time investment, but it continuously does damage from uh, the third round forward, thus being this kind of long-term play of uh, continuously forcing the defender to spend gold. So. Um, as you can see, also I have 120 gold out of 260. Every round, uh, we... Here, let me finish this because I'm running out of time. Um, I just confirmed the transaction right there. And as you'll see in one second, got accepted. And now we start the battle phase. Uh, one note just there. Um, every round that passes, both the attacker and defender get 100 gold. And so in order... Uh, to not hit your maximum limit, you typically, as the attacker, always want to have 60 or less gold at the end of your turn. And as the defender, you want 100 or less gold. So now that we place two Macaw Towers, you can see that this uh, Anaconda Tower already took damage. And as we continue this, the Anaconda Tower just got completely destroyed by these two Macaws, which did a hard counter. As they're moving forward, 
Uh, this Sloth Tower is very good against the Macaws, right? And so it took care of them quite well. However, the Gorillas are making a decent way through. And as you can see, that Sloth ended up taking care of pretty much two Macaw Towers. However, Piranhas are weak uh, in terms of damage. And so the Gorillas, which were here, which are Macaws, managed to destroy the Anaconda Tower that was killing all the Gorillas. Because the anaconda was destroyed, now the gorillas made them all the way through and actually got to uh, dealing 4 damage from the original 25 health. Now, we hit the next round already because the AI already played because it plays pretty much automatically. Uh, we've hit round 5 where the opponent has now placed down a few more structures with a sloth up there and another sloth down here, including a anaconda. Uh, this was a bad move, clearly, because two Makala Towers are going to completely destroy this Anaconda Tower. However, the Sloth Tower down here is actually uh, quite strong, because two Sloths will completely take care of the Makas, and will most likely deal significant damage uh, to these Gorillas, as they're only Tier 1. So as you can see here, the Anaconda Tower got destroyed, these Makas got completely destroyed by the Sloth Towers, Likewise, these macaws are being wiped out, and these gorillas will not make it through. So as you can see, the gameplay is really, you know, a strategic and very much counter to a counter to a counter to a counter, and that really makes it quite exciting. So given that we have this kind of setup, for example, where here there are a lot of sloth towers, I can show off now the jaguar crypt. Uh, jaguars are great because the AoE of sloths don't deal damage at all to them. And so really, the only thing we have to worry about here are piranhas. So one thing that we can do here is put uh, a three jaguar towers in one corner, so they all spawn in one spot. And so they will all run uh, together at the same distance. And that will actually make it, them a lot stronger because these piranha towers, while they're fast, if everything is more spread out, it's much easier for them to have enough time uh, to hit everything. While every when all the units are bunched up, that actually makes it much easier for them to get further. And as we'll see, because this AI uh, is... Uh, purposely we made the AI uh, not too hard to play against, I can do a hard counter now um, against these Sloth Towers with these Jaguars. And as we'll see, the Jaguars are managing to get through with this Piranha Tower being a counter Jaguar is doing a decent enough job to save uh, the Defender from completely being wiped out. If this uh, tower didn't exist, then that would have completely uh, destroyed the Defender with this Jaguars. Now, with this current state of affairs, we have kind of a few approaches. And one thing that's kind of interesting about the attacker is that the defender can heal uh, their towers, while the attacker and the defender also have the ability to salvage, which allows us to do a lot of fun stuff. So since here, this upper lane looks hopeless, what we can actually end up doing is uh, salvaging them for extra gold as you can see here, and then using that gold to actually power up everything we have down here. In our case, one of the best things to do as the Jaguars are getting quite close is actually to play uh, potentially, you know, to uh, upgrade our Jaguars to make them stronger, first of all. And with those upgrades, we can actually place down another Jaguar in the same area to then beef up our kind of uh, speed strategy that we're doing here and to see if we can make it past all of the units and as you can see the super um, fast uh, maximum tier jaguars they move extremely fast and for tier one piranhas that just uh, they managed to outspeed them and actually get to the very end and we took the win as the attacker so that's kind of in a nutshell the gameplay loop of uh, tower defense 
we are really excited because uh, the strategic elements of this kind of PvP tower defense game, they actually fit really, really well with uh, the on-chain type gameplay because the flows of you signing transactions actually end up feeling very seamless. And with the up and coming feature set of gaming accounts uh, for Pima Games, we're gonna really start to iterate step by step by step in making this full experience really smooth, really fun. And with this uh, level of depth of on-chain gameplay, which to our knowledge, this is the most uh, complex, both in terms of actual computation and both in terms of strategy and actually uh, the player versus player aspect of the game and the depth uh, that the meta and the actual long-term uh, potential for this game for people to really maximize and learn what are the perfect strategies and you know utilize both spatial and timing awareness, which is something that is uh, a lot more rare typically with uh, tower defense based games. We think there's a lot of really exciting elements with this uh, game that we've uh, spent a lot of time designing and developing. And I'm really happy here, uh, you know, as I've been leading this project for a while now, I'm really happy to have this uh, come close to now finally being live and for all of you to uh, you know, get a taste for it yourself to play and really enjoy uh, Wrath of the Jungle Tower Defense. Feel free, and I really highly recommend, you can rewatch your matches as you wish. Uh, so if you wanna see, you know, what was that crazy moment you saw at the end when you won, or if you wanna see a cool camera angle, or, you know, you, whatever you want, you can watch your replays. And then I highly recommend, try out a few different maps, try out both as the attacker and the defender, uh, create a bunch of practice lobbies, and once you feel comfortable and kind of get a feel for how the flow of the game works, what are the default strategies, which tower counters which crypt, which crypt counters which tower, and you kind of get a solid flow, then that's the perfect time to join our uh, Pima Discord, uh, come into the matchmaking channel, and start to play with others and really enjoy the depths of the strategy of Wrath of the Jungle Tower Defense. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or otherwise, please once again join our Discord. And we're happy to finally be bringing you the next Pima Studios game. And we're really excited to be creating this future together with all of you of fully on-chain gaming. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.